Okay, so I'm glad to introduce Peter Crooks, uh, the second speaker of this session uh, from Northeastern University, who will talk about partial compactifications of principal Poisson slices. Okay, uh, thank you first and foremost to the organizers for convening uh, this meeting. It, um, I, I, I say as someone that uh, has organized an online conference before. Um, this is this is about the most meticulously planned and and uh, executed thing of that sort that I've seen. Um, so I, I, I really want to commend the organizers for that. Um, it's very much appreciated. Uh, so today I would like to talk about a subject that is at the interface of uh, Lie theory and Poisson geometry. Um, and so I thought I'd uh, start by talking about the former um, in order to set the stage for coherently speaking about the latter. So I'll start with the Lee theoretic foundations and esoterics that we will actually need, okay? All right, so once and for all, uh, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to denote by capital G, a uh, complex semi-simple linear algebraic group of rank equal to L, R should be used for something else. Um, and I, I want this group to be of, of adjoint type. So a paradigm example to keep in mind would be the projective special linear group, PSLN uh, over the complex numbers rather than the, the simply connected group, SLN, okay? This will be needed for a construction a little bit later. Okay, and I'm gonna let little g be the Lie algebra of my group. And of course, this is a finite dimensional complex semi-simple Lie algebra. Um, and so the killing form on that Lie algebra is non-degenerate and it thereby gives rise to an identification of the Lie algebra with its dual, by which I will make um, no further distinction between these two vector spaces. Um, and at the same time, we can look at the dual of the Lie algebra with its canonical Lie Poisson structure and transfer it over to the Lie algebra by using the isomorphism. So this is going to render the Lie algebra G a Poisson variety, just like that. Now, of course, there are many things that one can say about this uh, Poisson structure on, on, uh, on the Lie algebra. Um, I, I'd like to say something um, that is, is perhaps not, um, not emphasized a great deal, but that is going to feature very prominently uh, in this talk. And it begins with the following considerations. So first, I'm gonna fix inside of my Lie algebra an SL2 triple, E, H, and F of elements. So by this, I mean that E, H, and F are uh, elements of the Lie algebra G, and they satisfy the Lie bracket identities that one would imagine if uh, E, H, and F were the standard three generators of SL2. Okay, so just, a, just a very uh, standard concept. Um, and now uh, any uh, SL2 triple tau will um, determine an associated slot of E slice. So one defines it by taking the third element F of the triple computing its Lie algebra centralizer. So now this is some vector subspace of the Lie algebra. Um, and then one translates that subspace by the first element E of the triple. So the result is now just an affine linear subspace of the Lie algebra. And this is the slot of E slice associated to the SL2 triple tau. And this turns out to interact very nicely with the Poisson structure on the Lie algebra uh, that I have just mentioned in the following sense. It turns out, this slot of E slice, it turns out to be a Poisson transversal inside of the Lie algebra G with respect to the Poisson structure that I have just, that I've just defined on G. So just recall a Poisson transversal in a, in a smooth Poisson variety is a locally closed subvariety with the property of being transverse to all of the symplectic leaves and such that its intersection with every symplectic leaf is a symplectic subvariety of that leaf. 
This and a great deal more is true of the Slotovy slice as tau. Um, but from my standpoint, we're working in a little bit too much generality. I don't want to work with completely arbitrary Slotovy slices all of the time. I want to specialize the, uh, to those that come from some very special SL2 triples tau. Um, and so to that end, I'm going to call, well, I'm not calling it this, but it is called an SL2 triple tau is called a principal SL2 triple. If the dimension of its slot of slice coincides with the rank of the group. And, and um, these have been investigated in, in many different ways over the years. They have um, principal SL2 triples have a number of, of very, very nice properties. And one is as follows. If you have any two principal SL2 triples, you can look at their associated slot of slices and those slices are going to be related by the adjoint action of the group G. So more precisely, uh, and this was proved by, proved by Costant, if you have two principal SL2 triples, then there is some element of the group that translates the slot of slice associated to one triple into the slot of slice associated to the other. Um, and this, this Lee theoretic fact uh, is going to feature quite prominently in uh, the treatment of Poisson slices that I'm about to give. Um, and, and so that's where I'm going to go next. I'm going to talk about Poisson slices in general. So one begins by fixing two pieces of information. The first is a Hamiltonian G variety X. And, and for me, this means that X is a smooth Poisson variety endowed with a Hamiltonian action of the group G um, and a moment map that I have denoted by nu. Okay, so that is the first piece of information that I must fix if I'm going to talk about Poisson slices. The second piece of information is simply an SL2 triple tau. Okay, and then I make the following observation. I can look at the pre-image of the Slotovy slice for tau under this moment map. And well, as I said, this slice is a Poisson transversal and the moment map nu is a Poisson morphism. So it will thereby under the pre-image operation take Poisson transversals to Poisson transversals. And so as a consequence, the pre-image of this slot of e slice under nu is going to be a Poisson transversal in my, in my Poisson variety X. And so this, this pre-image, which I'll denote by X tau, thereby acquires a Poisson structure. So I've, I've just produced a new Poisson variety. And I'm gonna give a name to that Poisson variety. Uh, I'm gonna call that Poisson variety X tau, the Poisson slice of X uh, determined by the SL2 triple tau, okay? Now that's just a, just a convenient definition. Okay, and, but again, I, I, I want to emphasize the case of a principal SL2 triple tau. So let's see what happens if tau is one of those. Well, let's suppose I have two principal SL2 triples. I can look at the slot of e slice for each. Those are going to be related by the adjoint action of the group. And because the moment map is equivariant, the pre-images of those slices are going to be related by the action of the group on X. So in other words, those pre-images are going to be Poisson isomorphic to each other. And so more precisely, one has this as a corollary of Costin's theorem, that if tau one and tau two are two principal SL2 triples, then the Poisson slices that they determine are going to be isomorphic as Poisson varieties. Not in a canonical way, but they will at least be isomorphic to each other. And so it is in that spirit that I will write the following. I'm gonna denote by X prin the uh, Poisson slice associated to tau, where tau is any principal SL2 triple. And this is well-defined up to, up to Poisson isomorphism by the, by the corollary that I just mentioned. Um, and so I'm going to call this X prin the principal uh, Poisson slice of X. 
Okay. All right. Uh, so in what follows, I'd like to give uh, a couple of, of very, very concrete examples of, of principal Poisson slices. Um, and and just for just for pure convenience, um, I'm I'm not going to work with Hamiltonian G varieties um, at the moment. I'm going to work with Hamiltonian G times G varieties. So of course the moment maps are going to take values now in the Lie algebra direct sum itself, and SL two triples will now be in the Lie algebra direct sum itself. But the theory of Poisson slices and principal Poisson slices is, is completely analogous. So I hope you'll forgive me for that. Okay, so for my first example, I can look at the cotangent bundle of the group G. And one knows that this cotangent bundle comes equipped with a canonical Hamiltonian action of the group times itself. Okay, and so I've, I've represented this by uh, this bullet point right here. And so now one can ask for this Hamiltonian G times G variety, what is the principal Poisson slice? And well, I'm not going to be able to do justice to this, um, except to say that the uh, principal Poisson slice in the cotangent bundle for this G times G action um, is, a, is a variety known as the universal centralizer of my, uh, of my Lie algebra. So this is a this is a Coulomb branch um, that shows up in the work of uh, Braverman, Finkelberg, and uh, Nakajima, um, and it's received quite a lot of attention in representation theoretic contexts. And I I, I will say a little bit more about that uh, a bit later. Um, but for now, I just want to make a very very simple observation that because this principal Poisson slice is a Poisson transversal in T star of G, which is symplectic, this um, principal Poisson slice, this universal centralizer is automatically going to be a symplectic subvariety of the cotangent bundle. So not only is it some, some Poisson variety, but in this case, it happens to be a symplectic variety. Okay, now I wanna do something um, a little bit more nuanced and perhaps interesting whereby I take the cotangent bundle um, and I replace it with a Poisson variety that, that is just a little bit larger, okay? Um, and, and the way I'm going to do that uh, is as follows. So first, because my group G is of adjoint type, I can look at its Deconcini Procesi wonderful compactification. So this is a smooth projective variety um, and it contains a copy of the group G as an open dense subvariety. Um, and now the complement of G in its wonderful compactification uh, is, a, is a normal crossing divisor. So I have a smooth projective variety, capital G, uh, G bar, um, and I have a normal crossing divisor in it. Um, and so I can associate to these two pieces of information a log cotangent bundle, which is typically denoted like that. And this is going to be a log symplectic variety, so nearly symplectic, but not quite. Uh, it's going to be a log symplectic variety um, that contains the cotangent bundle of the group G uh, as its unique open dense symplectic leaf. So it's just a very, very slight enlargement of the cotangent bundle of the group G, okay? Um, and the good news is that the Hamiltonian action of G times G on the cotangent bundle uh, extends to such an action on the log cotangent bundle. Um, and so I can look at Poisson slices now in the log cotangent bundle with respect to this Hamiltonian action of the group times itself. What happens in that case? Well, because the cotangent bundle is only slightly enlarged into the log cotangent bundle, I would expect to get something just slightly larger than the universal centralizer when I take the principal Poisson slice here. Um, and that's exactly what happens. And, and, and to denote or to indicate that this is just a, just a small enlargement of the universal centralizer, um, I'll, I'll denote this by uh, Zg bar, just like that. Um, 
And now, where is the universal centralizer uh, is a symplectic subvariety of the cotangent bundle. The analogous statement here uh, is that this object, the ZG bar, is a log symplectic subvariety of the log cotangent bundle, just like that. Okay. All right. So the relationship between the universal centralizer um, and its slight enlargement um, has been has been treated in the literature before, um, and is due to Anna Balibanu. Um, and and so for the next few minutes, I would like to um, uh, give a version uh, of of one of, of Balibanu's results that happens to suit my uh, particular purposes in this talk. Okay. So. Uh, Anna showed that there is a commutative diagram um, of this form. So I have the universal centralizer. I have a map to ZG bar. This map is, is just the inclusion map. Um, and I have maps to the cotangent bundle uh, quotiented by the action of G times G, not Hamiltonian reduction, just quotient. Um, and in this context, she shows that the, the map J um, is an open Poisson embedding. In fact, she actually shows that the universal centralizer is the unique open dense symplectic leaf um, in this slightly larger log symplectic variety. But she actually does a great deal more than that. And what's really interesting is that while the fibers of this first projection pi are, are only affine varieties, uh, she shows that the fibers of, of the second projection, this pi bar from the larger space, are actually projective varieties, just like that. Um, and, and so one can um, sort of conceptualize of this as follows. One can take the universal centralizer, ZG, um, and well, while one is not compactifying it, one is compactifying it as a variety over the cotangent bundle, just naive quotient by uh, the group times itself. Um, and somehow this, this fiber-wise or partial compactification process also respects the Poisson, in this case, symplectic structure of the universal centralizer. Now, uh, how can one look at this um, in, a, in a more holistic way? Well, one can say, let's set X equal to the cotangent bundle of, of the group G. Okay, well, then the universal centralizer, as I said before, is X prin. And what this is saying is that one may compactify X prin over X mod whatever group is acting on X. So one hopes to make that statement then um, in some greater generality. Okay, compactifying X prin as a variety over X mod whatever group is acting on X. So that's what I that's what I want to pursue uh, for the moment. Um, and um, I'm just going to switch back to Hamiltonian uh, G varieties. I use G times G here because this was useful for the purposes of examples. But um, I'm going to go back to Hamiltonian G varieties. Um, and then, so the task is as follows. If you have any Hamiltonian G variety X, what do you want to do to this? Well, you want to construct a diagram um, of this form where X is the principal Poisson slice um, and you want a bunch of extra maps um, and you want another variety X print bar, just like that. Okay. So of course, uh, mimicking what happened in the case of the universal centralizer, what requirements would one hope for in a diagram like this? Well, first, this X print bar had better be a Poisson variety, maybe not log symplectic like in the case of ZG bar, um, but it had better at least be Poisson if the original Poisson variety X um, was only Poisson. That seems reasonable. Um, and then secondly, well, one would hope for uh, this map J, whatever we construct it to be, if we're successful, one would hope for this to be an open uh, embedding of Poisson varieties. A third thing one would hope for uh, is that uh, the fibers of this, this map pi bar, which we would hope to construct, 
uh, are actually projected varieties, just like in the case of um, uh, ZG bar. Um, and then finally, um, again, referring back to the case of ZG, uh, that was a principal Poisson slice that happened to be symplectic. Um, and then the bar space for that happened to be log symplectic. And so one might also hope that if X prim happens to be a symplectic variety, then this general construction would produce an X prim bar uh, that is a log symplectic variety. So these are all things that one might ask for in a general construction. Um, and sort of skimming over the various technicalities involved, uh, Marcus uh, Roser and I showed uh, that this can be achieved in the presence of, of certain assumptions about X. So that's kind of a contentless statement because I'm not telling you what those certain assumptions are. And so um, it's not too hard to satisfy a, uh, a theorem like this, but um, uh, there are some very concrete conditions that do give rise to a large family of examples. And uh, if I have time, maybe I'll, I'll talk about that in the, uh, in the subsequent session. Uh, okay. A uh, 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 five minute warning. Yep, perfect. Okay, um, and uh, because time remains, I'll, I'll maybe give you just a, a very, very rough indication um, of how this, how this construction actually works, what, uh, how, you, how you complete it. So the very rough idea is as follows. You let tau be any SL2 triple, okay? And well, uh, what you can do is you can take the product of the group G with the Slotovy slice associated to tau. So that's a perfectly nice affine variety. Um, but this affine variety turns out to be a Hamiltonian G variety um, in, a, in a very nice um, explicit way. And it also happens to be symplectic. So I'm not going to explain how that's the case, but um, it does have the virtue of being true. Okay, now um, what else can one say? Well, you can take a general Hamiltonian G variety X and you can take its product with this Hamiltonian G variety. And then you can reduce that at level zero. You can take the Hamiltonian reduction of an arbitrary X times G times S tau. And what do you get? Well, it turns out you get a Poisson variety that is canonically isomorphic to the Poisson slice of X associated to tau. And now, well, we were looking to at least enlarge this space a little bit when tau uh, is a, it was a principal SL2 triple. So why not try to enlarge this space a little bit uh, for a general SL2 triple tau? And one way to do this is by taking G times S tau and possibly replacing it with a Hamiltonian G variety that is just a little bit larger. And then through this isomorphism, we'll be getting some very, very slight enlargement of X tau. Okay, that's the, that's the idea. Um, and so one can do exactly this. One can enlarge G times S tau uh, to a uh, log symplectic Hamiltonian G variety, G times S tau bar. And then as I said, one simply inserts G times S tau bar in place of G times S tau and obtains a a slightly larger space that I will denote by X tau bar, this Hamiltonian reduction. Um, now, of course, uh, this doesn't always make sense. This quotient might not always exist. So this is one of the technicalities that someone has to worry about when doing this construction, um, but it often does exist, okay? And then, um, well, because the original objective was to construct an X prim bar with various nice properties, um, one then specializes this construction to the case of a principal SL2 triple tau, okay? So this is very, very roughly how everything works. And, um, and I think I will stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Let's, let's give Peter a round of applause, uh, especially emoji applause. Everyone click your emoji applause. Thank you very much.